Egypt, an old saying goes, was the gift of the Nile. But the Egyptians believed there was one thing even mightier than the Nile. The sun. The god they called Ra. The god who created everything. Each morning with its rising, the sun god would be born. Each night in setting, he would die. But the next morning, he would rise again, never fading. He was eternal. When a king died, it was believed that he became one with Ra. His son, the new pharaoh, became Horus, the falcon, the living god on earth. And so the Egyptians accorded their rulers absolute power, which they used to build an extraordinary empire. An empire of buildings so enormous, an art so exquisite, we are still trying to understand how such wonders were created. How stones from the desert were turned into timeless monuments. Some of the oldest buildings on earth are here, preserved by the desert air and the skill of their creators. Some are so old that they had already stood a thousand years when Tutankhamun was born. The enormous obelisks of Khan were carved from single blocks of granite, moved hundreds of miles by boat, rolled on logs and perhaps levered up with huge timbers. Giant statues of Ramses the Great carved at Abu Simbel are still some of the largest figures ever sculpted from solid stone. We don't know how they did it, but we do know why. To honor the pharaohs, both in life and after death. Honor the pharaohs after death? Does that have anything to do with mummies? Yes. Look at Tutankhamun, for example. When the young king died, the priest sought to create a magical new body for him. For 70 days, they labored, drying and preserving the royal body with swords and ointments, then wrapping it in hundreds of feet of linen laden with protective jewels, charms, and amulets. And finally crowning the mummy with an exquisite golden death. ready for the afterlife. Had the boy lived and died a thousand years earlier, he would have been buried like pharaohs long before him, in a monument of colossal proportions, a man-made mountain of stone called the pyramid. They probably saw the pyramid's shape as a mystical link between earth and sky, providing the pharaoh's soul with a stairway to the heavens. Of the 
fabled seven wonders of the ancient world, only the pyramids of Giza remain, built more than 4,000 years ago. Nearly 500 feet tall, they contain some of the largest pieces of stone ever moved by humans, as much as 50 tons or more. Yet this was accomplished without wheels or pulleys or even iron tools. How in the world did they do it without modern machinery? The Goths certainly didn't do it. They used their minds. Knowledge built these great, great structures. Highly sophisticated knowledge. Look. All of the Giza pyramids are built in perfect alignment with certain stars. That takes the knowledge of astronomy. The pyramid's foundations are laid out in perfect angles and dimensions, precisely correct for the height they wanted to reach. Now that takes knowledge of geometry and mathematics. And finally, you must get these big stones from down here to up there. And you must make them all fit perfectly. Now that takes knowledge. An incredible knowledge of engineering and organization. Organization? Absolutely. You just said so yourself. It wasn't the gods who built these great monuments. It was people. Thousands and thousands of people. Imagine being one of these people living in a tiny village more than 4,000 years ago. Life would be pretty much the same day in and day out, farming, herding cattle, fishing in the Nile. Then one day, you selected to journey by boat down the Nile. You are now part of the great national project to build the Pharaoh's tomb. But you have no idea what kind of see a monument to the sun to life eternal how did they move such heavy stones to such great height there are many theories, but they probably pulled the blocks up mud slick in ramps. Raising the ramps as the pyramid grew, masons then set the stones with such precision a postcard couldn't fit between them. To create the Great Pyramid of Khufu, it took over 20 years, more than 2 million stone blocks, and some 20,000 people. And they might have been slaves. But now we think they were mostly peasant farmers recruited to work here part of the year. With their help, the early pharaohs built more than a hundred pyramids, 80 of which survive today. who came later. You told me King Tutankhamun wasn't buried in a pyramid. No, he wasn't. They stopped building them. And for good reason. There were robbers who cared far more about heaps of gold than an eternal journey. 